Hi friends and welcome to the channel. In another video I explained container basics on AWS, link above and below if you're interested in that. And in this video we're going to get some hands-on practice using the Elastic Container Service or ECS. We'll create an ECS cluster, a service, and a task that uses an Nginx container that'll let us run a simple web page. Before we dive into the demo though, I do just want to spend a second on some terminology and concepts. These can be a little bit confusing when you're getting started, so I want to make sure that we're on the same page. Starting with an ECS cluster, this is a logical grouping of tasks or services that run on infrastructure that's registered to that cluster. That infrastructure on AWS, of course, will be EC2 instances, and the way they get registered to your cluster is with the ECS agent running on Docker. Hopefully that makes sense so far, but how does that infrastructure, those EC2 instances, how does that get there? There are three different ways, or what are called launch types. First option is EC2, where you register and manage the instances yourself. You can use Fargate, which is a serverless solution. Everything is magically handled for you, really the easy way to go. And then external, if you have something on premises, for example, that you want to register and manage remotely, that uses ECS Anywhere. We're really only concerned about the top two here for our purposes, and Fargate will definitely be the easier way to go, where you don't have to worry about any of that underlying infrastructure yourself. And I should mention, you can also use a combination of these launch types. So maybe you manage some yourself and you have Fargate manage the rest. Okay, so we have our cluster. We know that inside of that cluster are gonna be EC2 instances, but wait, in ECS land, we actually need to change the names of those just to make it a little bit more confusing. These are actually called container instances, not EC2 instances even though they really are EC2 instances. So I'll just leave that there and we will cross it out to be a little bit more clear that yes, they are EC2 instances, but we call them container instances. All right, we have a cluster which has container instances in it, but what are these tasks or services that we've mentioned up here in green? A task is a running container. So for example, Nginx, whose settings are defined in a task definition. You can think of a task definition as a blueprint for an application. This is an example for a single container running the Nginx web server and using Fargate as the launch type. A task definition can also define more than one container, so it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one mapping, but this is what the definition looks like. And a task is just basically an instance of that definition. Not an instance as in a container instance or EC2 instance, but it's an instantiation of a task definition. And then lastly, the service defines long-running tasks with the same task definition. This could be just one container running or multiple containers running the same task definition. Putting together a visual for all of these things, it would look something like this. And for this diagram, I'm only showing one task per instance, but it could be many. And a task can also have one to many containers in it. The ECS scheduler is responsible for placing those tasks within the cluster, and there's different scheduling options available as well. All right, hopefully that helps with the terminology and concepts. Feel free to come back and reference these. We will see them in the UI as we go along, but I know it took me a little while to figure all of this out when I was first learning it, so hopefully that helps. Now on to the demo. If you haven't already, just navigate to ECS up here in your services menu, and you should get to a screen that looks like this or yours might look slightly different with another getting started message. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you've enabled the new ECS experience up here on the top left. You can just toggle that over. If you don't have that option at some point in the future when you're watching this, that means that you're already on the new experience. I think the UI is a little bit easier to understand and I would imagine the old experience is going away at some point as well. So move to the new experience and we'll wanna get started with creating our cluster. So here on the left nav, just click on clusters and we'll create cluster. I'll give it a name, my first cluster. For networking, I'm gonna go with all of the defaults here. For high availability, it's recommended that you have at least three subnets, and I've got four by default, so I'll just leave those. And then down here for infrastructure, this is where we say how the infrastructure is gonna be built. So remembering back to this slide, you remember that there were three different launch types and you can use one or some combination of those. You'll notice that Fargate is selected here and grayed out, so that will be enabled by default for the cluster. If you wanted to manually configure and manage your own EC2 instances, you could select this option here, 
And then if you had some on-premises or external instances, you could use the ECS Anywhere option. For what we're doing though, we're just gonna keep things really simple. We'll let Fargate take care of all of the infrastructure, skip the other things here as optional and say create. And success. Let's click into my first cluster. We'll take a quick look around. Looking at infrastructure in particular, you'll see that we have two capacity providers for Fargate and Fargate Spot. So that's how the infrastructure will be created once we need it, once we actually have a container to run. If we had manually created EC2 instances, those would show up on the bottom of the screen here. All right, those are the basics of creating the cluster and the infrastructure for it, but it doesn't really do anything at the moment. We don't have any tasks or services. So let's go talk about what we need to do next. I'm gonna simplify things here to start, and then we will gradually build on this. But so far we have the cluster, which we've just built. The infrastructure in that cluster, again, we're using Fargate, so the spinning up of EC2 instances or container instances, that's all gonna be handled for us, which is fantastic. And then how we want this to work is we're gonna use an Nginx container from the Amazon Elastic Container Registry, or ECR, the public gallery. Nginx will basically give us a web server, so we'll be able to launch a simple web page. The service we create is going to go grab that container and then run it as a task. And then an end user will be able to hit the public IP of the container in that task and see the web page. A lot of moving parts. Where should we start? Backing up to a slide that we saw earlier in the video, you remember that the service consists of tasks that use the same task definition. Tasks are built from that task definition. So that's actually where we need to start is on the task definition. We couldn't just go and directly create the service. So back here in ECS on the left nav, let me expand that. We'll come into task definitions and we'll create a new one. I'll call this Nginx task definition. And then let's talk about the container that we're gonna use here. I'll open a new tab. And I'm going to navigate to gallery.ecr.aws. This, of course, is the ECR public gallery. And then up here, I'm going to search for Nginx. If you're getting back a lot of results, you can also filter by the verified account over here on the left. And this is the one we want right here. There's lots of other containers out there as well. Feel free to play around with them. But these are the details that we're going to need. So back here in ECS, the name of our container will be Nginx. And then the image URI, we get that from the public gallery back here. So you want to copy this right here, come back and paste it in. We'll leave everything else the same here. You could add additional containers down here on the bottom. So remember a task definition can have multiple containers, not just the one, but for our purposes, we will go with just the one and then say next. Now we want to configure the environment, storage, and then optionally monitoring and tags. Here we're specifying the infrastructure for this definition. Once again, we've got either serverless with Fargate or setting up the instances yourself. We're just using Fargate and that's already selected for us. Then we need to choose the operating system for those instances that get set up. We're going to go with Linux, but there are also options for Windows here. And then the CPU and memory that you want to reserve for each task. This one's very simple, so we'll just go with 0.5 here on the CPU and one gig of memory. Scrolling down to task roles. We haven't really touched on this here in the video, but you might be familiar with IAM roles. If not, check out the video linked above, but these will grant temporary access to other services. So for example, if your task needed to write to an S3 bucket, or write to a DynamoDB table, for example, then you'd need to set up that role and hook that up here. This particular task is not doing any of those things, so I'll skip that part, but that's what that's for. Everything else is optional here. I'll just scroll down, leave all the defaults, and then say next. Do a review, and then click on Create. So it's creating the task definition. As soon as this is done, then we can move on to working with our service. All right, let's back up to our cluster. So over here on the left, navigation, clusters, my first cluster, and then down here under services, 
click on the Deploy button over here. The cluster should be filled in already for you, my first cluster. You don't need to update this compute configuration for what we're doing, so I'll just collapse that. Deployment configuration, you've got options for service, basically a group of long running tasks like a web application. This is the one that we're going to use. You could also, though, just run a standalone task if you wanted, something like a batch job that just runs once and then it terminates. But let's go with service. And then for task definition, this is where we hook everything up to that definition that we just created. So family here is going to be Nginx task definition. My revision number is three because I've done this a couple of times getting this set up. Yours will probably be one, so don't worry about that. And then the service name is going to be Nginx service. Desired number of tasks, we're just going to go simple and leave it at one. You could have multiple tasks that spin up though. For load balancing, we're not going to set that up in this video. If you would find that useful though, let me know below in the comments. I'm happy to make a video about that. For networking, we do need to make some updates here. So back to the slides real quickly. Remember we said that we want the user to be able to hit the public IP address of the container. And that means we need a security group at the service level that allows inbound traffic on port 80, which is the default Nginx port. So let's go see how to do that. Here in the networking section, we're saying, first of all, that we do want a public IP address. So make sure this is enabled down here. It should be toggled to enabled by default. And then the subnets that we're using, we'll leave everything selected. And then security group, like we just talked about, we'll create a new security group. If you have one already that enables inbound traffic on port 80, feel free to use that, but we'll just create a new one here. I'm going to call mine container SG. I actually have an SG, so I'll do an SG1 security group. And then the description, this is our security group for the Nginx container. The inbound rules here will add a new rule, and this should allow HTTP traffic, should default to port 80 for you, and we're going to allow that from anywhere. That should be all you need to do here for networking. We can skip the tags and say deploy. So it's deploying the service. This might take a minute or two, so I will pause and be right back. And success. Let me close out of these. Down here under services, you'll see that we have one active service. And then if you click into tasks, click on the task ID right here. And we just clicked into the task, but you will notice up on the breadcrumb that we've actually dropped into the container here called Nginx. As we've asked for, there is a public IP right over here. So let me copy that to my clipboard. I'll open up a new tab paste that in. And here's our Nginx web page. Yay. So we're using the elastic container service to go grab a container from the Amazon container registry and everything is working as it should. Now, before you run off a very important reminder, if you've been following along, let's go delete everything that we spun up in this video. You don't want any surprise bills at the end of the month. So back up to your cluster here, my first cluster. Coming into tasks, select your task, and then we will say stop up here. We'll confirm this stop. And then moving over to the services tab, let's select this and we will delete service. And here I'm going to do a force delete so that ECS will scale the service down before deleting it. And delete. And then finally, let's delete the cluster as well. So up here on the top right, delete my first cluster. And then let's also go take care of our task definition. This won't cost you anything if you keep it around, but just to keep things clean, click into the task definition, select it here, and then deregister it. There's not a delete option here, but deregistering basically means that nothing can use it in the future. No new tasks or new services. So we'll deregister. And with that, there's just one final thing to do, and that is to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. It really does help it spread to more people. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.